A1C. You know it, I know it. It is one of the most important numbers in diabetes management. Whether you're type 1 or type 2, whatever your A1C is, is critical to determine what kind of complications you're at risk for later on. Because A1C basically shows what your average glucose is looking like over time, over about three months exactly. And it is very strongly correlated with all sorts of complications. The higher the A1C, the higher the complications every single time. So it's very important to figure out what is a good A1C and to stick to it. Unfortunately, there is a lot of controversy in what is a good A1C. The American Diabetes Association would say that a goal for A1C is individualized, of course, the cop-out move, but in general they would give a recommendation of 7%, and maybe even 8%, depending on the context. But I think this is woefully inaccurate and honestly reckless. After all, a non-diabetic's A1C is considered to become diabetic once it goes past 5.7. If 5.7 is not a normal A1C, and 7% certainly is way above that, then how can that be healthy? Well, let's go into what exactly is a healthy A1C, and to do that, let's actually look at the risks, because the way I see it, something that is healthy means that's not raising your risk for complications. So automatically, whatever healthy A1C is, the A1C must be one to where your risk of heart disease, of retinopathy, and all the rest are at its lowest. Otherwise, it's not healthy. I mean, if you smoke one pack of cigarettes instead of two packs of cigarettes, sure, it's relatively healthier, but it's not healthy. Same with A1C. 7% might be a healthier A1C than 11%, but if it's still raising complications, that must mean it's not healthy. So let's actually look into when complications happen at what A1C and how bad it is. Let's start with heart disease. Heart disease is the number one killer in today's modern world and obviously that's probably the most important thing you want to think about so when it comes to heart disease what's the risk with a1c whereas actually numerous studies showing that your risk for heart disease goes up and up and up well before you hit seven in fact it starts going up sometimes when you go past five percent or even just 5.5 percent for example in one study that had just non-diabetic patients in it we see that going all the way up from 5.5 to 6.5, risks of complications start to increase. And at 6.5, they're almost triple what it is at 5.5. Another study looked at almost 10,000 people, both men and women, and looked at their A1C, looked at the heart attacks, and looked at the correlation of it. What they found was astounding. So for the men, they looked at number of heart attacks, people that had a heart attack per 100. And they noticed that at 5%, there was about 3.8 men per 100 that had a heart attack. At 5.5%, that went double to 6.4%. And all the way up and up and up at 7%, you'll never believe this, the number of people that had a heart attack per 100 was 28.4 which is over seven times higher than the 5%. And what about women? Even worse, at 5%, the, number, the risk for heart attack was 1.7 out of 100. It's a little better than men, good start. But at 7%, the supposedly good A1C that the doctor wants you to get at, it was 16.2 per 100, almost 10 times higher than an A1C of 5%. And again, just like before, at 5.5 .5 it was higher, at 6.5 it was even higher, at 7.5 at 7 it was 16.2. 10 times higher. And even just looking at the vascular system, look at your micro macular vascular system, complications increase dramatically there as well from 5.5% onwards. So it's pretty clear from heart attacks, and there's even more studies than that. There's even more studies than that going over heart attacks and A1C, but from just getting the tip of the iceberg, it's pretty clear that risk starts to come out after about 5%. What about cancer? Same thing. If we look at cancer, we look at the 
incidence of cancer based on A1C, you'll notice the same thing, that after even about 5% it starts to creep up a little bit, and after 6, it shoots up. That 6% is supposed to be healthy, but at that point, your risk of cancer is shooting up. And if you zoom in further on another study, looking at just from 5% to 6%, the risk starts to increase dramatically at 5.5. How can we say that this is a healthy A1C, 6 or 7%, when we can see risk going up dramatically for both cancer and heart disease? Now, we could get into all the other complications that rise from high A1C, like brain damage, kidney failure, retinopathy. But instead, let's just go over mortality here and sum it all up. Look at the complications you might get in 10 years and there was another study that looked at a bunch of diabetics and looked at them in 10 years and seen if any get complications. 99% of the people that stayed in 5% didn't have complications. Over 90% of the people that had about 5.5 or lower didn't have complications. But after that 5.5, once you go into 6, 6.5, 7, you're going from 80% to 60% to 20% when your A1C is 7%. Only 20% of the people with an A1C that high didn't have complications after 10 years. I don't think it can get any clearer than that. Clearly, an A1C of 7% isn't healthy. And honestly, it's an A1C that's going to guarantee complications. A healthy A1C, one that is going to minimize your risk, according to these studies, is one that is about 5%. Maybe you can get away 5.5%, but ideally, you want it below 5% if you want your risk of complications as low as possible. Why then does the doctor recommend 7% or even sometimes 8%? I believe it comes down to them believing that's too difficult for many diabetics to get to that 5% and unfortunately they might be statistically accurate on that. If you look at the mean A1C of diabetics now from a study of 2016 2018, the average A1C, no matter what your age is, is well over 7.5. And for teenagers, from 15 to 18, the average A1C is 9.3, which is crazy high. Crazy. You're definitely going for complications with A1C like that. Unfortunately, that's the norm. That's the average A1C that these kids are having, and it's honestly really sad. And so doctors conclude, well, if we can't get kids down to 5%, that's totally impossible. We'll try to just go for 7% instead and not, not lessen their complications completely, but, you know, at least stave it off. Well, if we're going to tame type 1, if we're going to live healthy lives, and we can, we can't accept that. We can't accept the idea that complications are inevitable, that we're just going to delay complications further out rather than avoid them completely. We can avoid complications. We can get an A1C of 5. It is 100% possible. Now, it might be impossible if you're doing the high carb approach and just taking a ton of insulin. In fact, studies have shown that it's almost detrimental to try to do that. But if you do it the right way, if you go low carb, if you follow the Bernstein approach, you can achieve that 5%. You can get there. And none of this means that you can't celebrate when your A1C goes down from 7 to 6 or from 6 to 5.5. Celebrate it. Celebrate whatever progress you make. But don't make it an end goal. Your end goal should be below 5%, and you shouldn't be completely satisfied until then. So keep that in mind. Lower your risk as much as possible by keeping your A1C at or below 5%. And that way, you can tame your type 1. Now, if you like this video, if you want to see more content, if you like the message I'm giving out there, be sure to like the video, subscribe to the page, subscribe to the channel, and follow me on all the social media so that way, not only you can you keep up with me, but you can support what I'm doing and help spread it out there. Be sure to share it, like it, comment, do whatever you gotta do, spread the word, and let's make sure everyone can help tame their type 1.